Welcome to the Savernac. The history of this woodland is well documented. But what you need to know is that it is a remnant of primeval woodland. Hunted by royals for a thousand years. And now, by a strange twist of fate, by peasants such as I. It's coming home. And what an experience it was set to be. Many of you will know my more progressive than popular opinions on pheasant shooting, and today embodied everything that is good about this wonderful British tradition. Everybody, welcome to God's County, Wiltshire. It's the second time I've been here this season and we're here in the Sabernack. You've seen us here stalking before. I come stalking here fairly regularly without a camera because it turns out you can stalk and get meat without putting it on social media. However, today we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go pheasant shooting. There's a syndicate here and I've been invited by one of the guys as his guest. It's gonna be really wet. Welcome to Wiltshire Pheasants in the rain. Good morning everybody, a bit wet today so we're going to change a few drives around, do something a bit different. The whites and the reeves, again, £50 fine. So no missing, please, please be safe. Try and get him to be as safe as one. He got a I'm really excited actually. I, I've, I've, I've stalked these woods and I've been here a fair few times. This is um, seeing it from a totally different perspective. It's going to be an experience. An experience. Let's do that. This might blow some people's minds that to get to the first drive, we are now pushing, we're blanking an area in for the beaters to then push it back. Actually having to do something to earn those driven birds is wild. It's not. That is, oh, it's part of why these days are so special. I don't want to break Nick Horton's stick. I mean, it's my stick, but Nick Horton made it. But it's not a beating stick. It'd be quite funny if we broke it, to be honest. And if we broke it, it would still be suitable height for, you know, and. Or oh, Sash. So I want to make a case and point that I get a lot of American friends of course, taking fun of these and saying, we dress for practicality. A good set of breeks are hands down the most practical leg wear in the world for this kind of thing. The freedom of movement they give you, the fact that they don't go down inside your boots so you can tuck them over the top if you're a normal height. And they're wool, they are sustainable, they're warm, looked after, they're almost waterproof or waterproof enough. I'm a big fan. If I could get away wearing, wearing them every day and people wouldn't think I was a bit of a loon, I would. Sash at this point abandoned his trusty Sony and reverted to the classic iPhone. We are already onto the phone. Sorry for the audio. Here we are, Peg 9, next to one of the ancient oaks of the Savernac. It's a proper privilege to be shooting here today. Because everything's going to get wet and muddy today. I think it's just totally acceptable to just get behind it, enjoy it, embrace it, right, Sash? Yeah, boy. You having fun filming this? Oh, I love filming in the rain. I spend a lot of time now shooting, stood in perfectly manicured fields. It's kind of nice to stand in a woodland. It's a very different kettle of fish. The birds are different. The anticipation is very different. It's a totally different skill. You know, you're not seeing a bird come at you from X distance and climbing and making a plan. It's like that, sort of flicking the trees. It was actually a pigeon, but you have to be on so much more guard. Yeah, shooting game with 32 inch barrels in woodland is frowned upon, but I'm a big guy. So hopefully we'll make something of it. If not, that's my excuse. But not the new action. Well, the game stock was on this one and it's raining a lot. <laughs> so you figured you'd spare it? Well, I've only shot it twice. I don't want to come out on a day that's supposed to be the wettest day of the season. So correct me if I'm wrong, you respect your action and care about your action more than you do me. <laughs> I've got a spare gun. That's my there camera. is no other Sasha Novakovic. There is only one. 
big hen. It's all happened a bit quicker than I thought. It's a different gravy shooting in wood. It'll take a little while to adjust up here. We should go to the pub now, can we, Sash? I think that's a good idea. So yeah, I, I missed everything there. I was clearly distracted by Sasha's constant complaints about his camera and its lack of compatibility with the rain. I got three uh, birds. Yeah, he got three birds. It's not bad. Your dad said you'd been shooting pretty much all of Christmas and that's why you weren't allowed to come today. Me, me and Finn shot both more than half the bag. After the drive, we saddled up and it was time to leave the woods. I was lucky enough to know some of the other guns here today. One of them was Jack, a kindred spirit and one of the people who featured in our Why We Hunt video. I have an incredibly high prey drive. Jack, you are known in our office as Mr. Prey Drive now. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you coined the, the theory, the but... Predator. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> predator Jack. Prey Drive is the innate desire we all have to hunt, which manifests itself in loads of different ways, one of which is game shooting, but I think other ones are roach pole fishing or uh, bird watching or any other net out activity in the outdoors where you're trying to outwit nature. I've, I've used prairie drive in a few conversations now. I think it's a it's a valid thing because there's no word for the enjoyment. There's no, there's no adjective for what we do. I don't think prairie drive is the correct adjective for the enjoyment aspect that we get, but it's the adjective for the reason. Do you have any words of wisdom you'd like to say to the TGS crew? They do. When you have lots of children with you, um, take earplugs when you've got them all in the car to bring them on stop because the nonsense for the last five minutes that I've just heard in that car and what I now don't know about Fortnite is worthless. <laughs> just so you know what we're doing here, we're doing a strike completely like you've never done it before. Mm. What we're going to do is, if you sort of line out in number, so we're shooting right to left, a lot of you are bankers, so you probably need to write it on your hand. <laughs> we'll try and just push this bit through to the back of the clumps and you're not going to be where you normally would stand for the drive. Cool Doritos are cool if you've got dips. Go yeah, it. lots of dips. Yeah. But then tell yeah. me you're, you're increasing the calorie me. burden and that's becoming evident that that's a problem for me. A short discussion with the lads about the ultimate flavour of Pringles and Doritos, it was out onto Peg. <laughs> two. two would be, so four, three, two, one. Over. Sash, would you eat a, uh, one of these little beauties? Who are they? Uh, it's double tendency. They're not even bad. What's the review? Not bad on the pinch. <laughs> they are inherently beautiful. Over. Woo. I should have thrown away that um, phallus turnip, to be honest. That was quite tasty. Really? Yeah, I've got a bit of a hankering for more. Isn't it funny how we stood on Peg and the rain started again? I think I think Paul organised it. I mean, he's a legendary gamekeeper. He's probably got those sort of superpowers for effect, atmosphere. It's the legend of Salisbury Plain. It's not allowed to be dry and nice and sunny. Cameras can be deceptive, and this iPhone certainly makes me look like a good shot. I don't make an admission, I've actually got a box of fives in, in the bag, but a few of them have gone in. Lead fives, Hydro Rod, and they are epic. Jack! There is some beautiful, very good shooting. Everyone has shot well, apart from Jack. Who only shot that one low one, nothing else. It's funny this shoot, there's a lot of little places like this across the country. And if you put the wrong keeper in charge, it could be average. But because Paul the Keeper here has a long history of working at some of the most prestigious pheasant shoots, it's utterly wonderful. There are no walls or boundaries at this shoot. 
guns, beaters, pickers up, all mixing together and getting involved. Every drive here was special, so I can't say that this next one was my favourite, but pheasants, well driven from a woodland, in the best county in Britain, it really doesn't get much better. It's not bad. I just got a new gun cough. The same as my cough, so I've got 20 dollars. I heard. Very cool. Well, to be fair, now you've got a 12 ball. Well, I'm with, go, I'm go, with do some work. go do some work. No, no I'm with them. They're not going to pay you. No, you're out there. You'll be destitute. So Jack and I had a conversation back along that there's a lot of dogma and laws and rules, laws, rules in place with game shooting and, and etiquette that perhaps nowadays need to be modernised. You know, perhaps instead of it being embarrassing for, for pummeling a low bird, it should be embarrassing for not taking half of what you shoot home. Amongst other things. Do you think... I, I do think there could be some modernisation with, with the things that we frown upon. You know, not, not wearing a tie is, is perhaps not as bad as shooting birds out of range. Just a thought. Luckily, I've got a backgun, so you can save some embarrassment. None of the guns were complaining about the weather. This is as close to perfect as you would want a shoot day. Breezy, overcast with light showers, classic stuff. These little clearings is one of my favourite places on the estate to, to sit for deer or to, to exist. And the pheasants come out of here, uh, this is very traditional, it's nice. On top of that are left and right. I haven't shot left and right in a little while. I've been focusing on, on single shots and reloads this season as sort of a, some sort of art of game shooting if there is an art form to what we do. Oh, look at that bird. That was lovely. I, a proper traditional drive. I think we all get um, told that shooting them off of, uh, you know, bare ass mountainside in, in odd obscure parts of the country is like the creme de la creme. But I, I think that I um, am actually standing in little pieces of paradise, little privileged areas like this and, and shooting good, cute level birds fighting the wind or, or fighting on the wind, banking on the wind is, is part of the creme. There's no, there's no creme a bit than the creme bit. It's all creme. A short break for sausages, and it was back in the woods. I was looking forward to trying to redeem myself after that first drive. Sasha even cracked out a proper camera. Sorry again for the audio. We're back in some thick woods after being in my element out in a field. It's such a different gravy. It's a lot harder to reach time and speed when there's a lot of trees in the way. I think for all of that, again, I'm not obsession with high birds, that, that cultural shift, that is the creme. I love this guy. It's not as calculated as the sporter, but... But just for connect and drive, it's uh, it takes such a different mindset and ability to do this well. It's where that real test of eyesight comes in. It's that test of discipline and knowledge and nice to be humiliated. It's nice to be humiliated. Some of the birds coming off the back end of this drive are mental. So today I was coming here knowing this ground well, thinking the birds would be X, but they are. Mm. 
Apex Type 2. And the guns after the first drive, when it was wet and miserable and couldn't hit anything, have now warmed up. Some sparkling English wine, it just goes a long way. So to be honest, on that drive there was a, a tendency, and I think that was probably my problem on the first in the woods, to not move your feet as you would in a field where you make your blind and everything, because it's, everything happens a bit faster, a little more intense, and there's less visual engagement. I don't know a man who'd probably be able to explain that away, or, or give you something to train on with that. But the important thing for me, certainly, was to turn and address a bird properly, regardless of the trees and the, the intensity. And These are a perfect example of wilded pheasants. This day reinforced to me what driven pheasant shooting should be about. Community. The atmosphere was perfect, with smiles and laughter everywhere you look. There were no barriers between age or class, just a very pure sense of togetherness. Shooting at healthy, wily birds, presenting a challenge to shoot, but at ranges that were both humane, but also kept meat damage to a minimum. The total bag today left everyone satisfied, and a full day of shooting was had. From guns helping to pick up to the proximity and openness of the game cart all day, finished with the ceremonial tableau of the birds we had taken that day. It is a beautiful way to pay respect to the game, all of which was taken home to eat by the men and women who participated in the day. My compliments to Paul for putting on such a wonderful day, and my eternal thanks to Tim for the invitation. <laughs>